Okay, we're a little early with Layden, but he's ready if we're ready. So we'll start off with a question there on the left side in the back. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Zach Calzada stepped in last year and performed really well down the stretch after, after Hayes got hurt. Uh, he's transferred to Auburn. He's competing to be the new starting quarterback at Auburn. What can you say about the job Zach did last year, and what is Auburn getting in, in Zach Calzada? Zach did amazing when he stepped in. You know, it was a crazy thing when he stepped in because, you know, he just got in. So he's done a great job for us last season. He yeah. stepped up to the plate. You know, it was rough times, but all of us have rough times. And he showed that commitment to where, hey, I'm going to fight through this. If y'all got my back, I got y'all back. And that's what we did for the rest of that season. And we pretty had a pretty decent, successful season with him. I know Auburn are getting a very competitive, a guy with a strong arm, a guy that you could lean on and depend on when things get tough in situations. As y'all saw in previous games that he's played, he's been done great in clutch moments. So I have all the faith in Zach that Zach is going to be the best Zach can be. And Zach is going to be amazing in whatever he does at that school. Shock, you have a question? Front row. Uh, just the LSU rivalry over the, the last few years, and you guys will host them this year. Just your thoughts on, on playing the Tigers. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great game playing them. You know, it's always a great feeling, especially when we go to their stadium or when they come to us. It's always a great game. You know, it's always going to be a high intense game. All, everybody is excited for that game, especially when we get on the field. It's, it's, just, it's just very hype and it's, you just can't shake the feeling. So, so in this new era of college football, Max Johnson throws the game-winning touchdown pass against you guys, and then like for a few weeks later, he's on your team. <laughs> now, how wild is that, and what's Max like? Oh, Max is, Max, is, Max is dope. I mean, he is amazing. He's come in with his brother, you know, his, the energy that they have towards each other and they just bring to the team. You know, they kind of remind me of like the Gronkowski brothers or the White brothers, just the way their connection is and the way the energy they just bring to our team. It's a, it's amazing. And we talked about it. We talked about that. We're like, man, why you had to do that to us? <laughs> like, like the last play. And he was like, you know, man, it's just doing my job. You know, so it was just amazing, amazing. That was an amazing game. And just him coming to us and bringing his energy, his, it's just amazing fit. He's came in. He's didn't say too much. Earned his respect. Put in the work in every single day with his brother. Over here on the right. Just want to ask you a little bit. You know, kind of the vibe in the locker room. You know, this off season heading into the fall. Coach Fisher just said a little while ago. You know, talent across the board, not just in key positions on the field. You know, what are you guys kind of as you work out the summer and head into you know a season filled with a lot of hype. You know, a lot of high-profile recruits coming in, you know, what's, what's the goal for this team in 2022? The goal for this team is to compete for a national championship. Same goal every year, nothing's changing. We know our standard, and our standard is to be the best we can be every day, rise up to the occasion, especially when all chips are down towards you, just to rise up. That's our standard for this season. And we're working every day with the younger guys and making sure as the older guys, we're holding ourselves accountable until what we're telling the younger guys. Right here in the front row. Hey, Layden, AP Stedham, WGP, Foley, Alabama. Uh, Layden, what would you like to see from the offensive line this season in the run game and the pass game? I would like to see aggressiveness and just that dedication not to let our quarterback get touched. You know, that's big, and that's how the old school lines work. Coach Adazio has very implemented that in us. Like, nobody touches our quarterback. We create movement on the line. We worry about the down line, and then we worry about the linebackers. It's just that old school raw mentality, and that's the best mentality to me because <laughs> that lets you know what type of offensive line you are from the go in up front. On the right. Uh, Layden, why, why are sometimes offensive linemen the, the best talkers when it comes to you know, things like this? <laughs> you know, I, I really don't know. Um, we just keep our head down. We just grind, and we know what we can do on the field if we just keep going and just stay, stay humble and stay quiet and composed sometimes, I guess. And then uh, you know, NIL has been around for about a year. How have you seen that just with guys in the locker room and everything? Has it change college football at all or just how's it been a year later now um is nil has been a great opportunity for a lot of for a lot of athletes but 
we just really don't pay attention to NIL like that. It just comes and comes and goes and in and out and we just focus on this season to making sure every day we take the strides that we need to try like strive to be successful. In the back on the left. You mentioned uh, you mentioned Coach Adazio and he's one of the most accomplished offensive line coaches in college football, but he's spent most of the last decade as a head coach. Uh, what have you uh, what have you learned from him uh, si since he arrived and, and what's it like having someone with so much head coaching experience as your position coach? Well, I mean, I've learned a lot from Coach Adazio and just finding the passion for the game. Why are you doing this? I, it's just crazy how much I've learned from him. He just makes you want to be better. Every day you step in the room, when you step in a meeting, you know, we have fun, but it's also when it's business time, it's business time. And he just lets you know, and you can see all the teams he's been on and the championships that he's won. And as you mentioned, him being a head coach, he just knows what it takes. And that's amazing to have a head coach that used to be a head coach. As your offensive line coach, that means he's totally focused on this group to make sure that this group is successful that it could be. And I mean, it was just a blessing from the skies getting him on our staff. Right side, second row. Lane Keggs, TV and College Station. Uh, the close losses last year, whether it be LSU you mentioned or Ole Miss or, you know, it goes down the, I think, what, four of those losses were by seven or less. What would you guys learn about just being right there but coming up a little bit short, and how do you fix that this year? We, we just learned from that what, like, what we got to preparate, like, how we got to preparate, like, next time for next time. That's all we learned. We learned, hey, if we could just go that much further, we know what we did wrong. We know what we have to do to be more successful next time. And that's the best part about it. So we're just going to take that into this season and make sure we strain our hardest every single game and make sure that we leave no doubt on the field that we gave it all we got. Left side back, bro. In your time at Texas A&M, are there any defensive linemen that really stand out, either, either teammates or opponents, as guys that really made an impression on you with their talent and, and, and the way they do their job? Shamar Turner. He's made a very impact on me since the day he came in. And McKinley Jackson, like, you know, Isaiah Race, them guys on the inside, they've made a great impact on me. I mean, they challenged me every day in practice as I challenged them. And we always stepped up, step up to the occasion while going against each other. It's always a mutual respect. And we just know that we're on that field to get each other better every day. I know they're the best D-line I'm facing. And hopefully it's the same that we're the best O-line that they're facing. And that's what we just got to take that mentality into practice this season. Third row, right side. You know, playing offensive line in the SEC is arguably the most physical battle in college football, you know. But as, as much as it is physical, how much of a mental battle is it playing offensive line in this conference, given that you're really only highlighted when you do something wrong, you know. <laughs> A holding call and a touchdown, you know, a clip, something like that. How much do you have to prepare mentally to play in this conference? It's your position. Well, to me, it's mentally more than physically. So you have to prepare by knowing their blitzes. You have to know what player you're getting, what move they may give you in the third down situation. Okay, so what is his tendencies in third down if they're running this type of stunt or this type of play? You just have to pay attention more. It's always a thinking game. What, what body position can I put myself into to where I'm not hurting my center or not hurting my right tackle of getting too much space in it so that it will make a big gap? You know, it's just always this thinking game. And I say that's the, one of the best parts about playing O-line. It tests you mentally, and it sees, like, how focused you are on the little details in the game. You probably have a lot of friends who play in this conference. You probably have a lot of them who don't make it to this conference. The ones that don't, are they jealous, or what do they ask you about the SEC? <laughs> they just, normally my friends, they just ask me, like, how is it playing against <laughs> SEC competition? How is it? And I'll just say, well, you're playing against 320-pound, 30-pound D linemen every day. It makes you tough, mm -hmm. and it makes you, like, ground, and it makes you ground mm -hmm. harder. And my circle is really small, uh -huh. so I don't really have a, like a lot, a lot of friends. I just have my small circle group. Let's see, we'll go back here on the left. Kind of a goofy question, but I think I heard you guys talking about it before. The, the Texas A&M band, when they perform at halftime and they all go different ways, left mm -hmm. and right, and they never bump into each other or anything. Does that amaze you? Have you ever watched these guys? And I've never <laughs> got to watch them, but I hear amazing things about it all the time. 
And I know that takes a lot of focus. <laughs> I already know how that band thing is. And also you practicing and hiding and having your band equipment on. And that's very important. You know, the closest I ever saw the band was drumline. So <laughs> I could just imagine <laughs> how, what they go through and what they do. But it's amazing what they could do out here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's that's always after every game when we win. I'm just <laughs> excited to see that. It's just that's just us uniting as a whole and as a family. And the twelfth man is just exciting and celebrating that we won the game. That's a big aspect of our culture at the end of the game. All right, two last questions. So, your, your impressions of Max Johnson uh, since since he arrived on campus and, and the way he's competing to be your starting quarterback? He's competing well. He's coming every day with his head down, grinding, studying. It's like, it's like all the other quarterbacks in the situation. And he's came in. He's made our program even pop. He's made it just more exciting. Uh, fourth quarter, when he came in, he made sure he was hard working. And you, you know, we always like get tailed by our jerseys. He had the maroon jersey with the SEC patch. So that means you're working. You're one of our top workers. You're one of the top people that's working hard. And he had that. So that shows a lot to you about his character. Last question. Was the Alabama game one of your best games as a unit on the offensive line? I can say as a unit, I feel like it was, it was, like it was, it was up there. But we prepared for that game just like we prepared for all of our other games. We made sure that, hey, we just got to make sure that we get every little thing right. We got to make sure that we, if we have a bad play, just shake it off and go to the next play, which we did throughout the whole season. So that, so that game, the way we played, that was from the preparations of the other games that we had getting to learn each other and getting to know each other. Yeah. Layton, really good job. Thanks very much. For Thank you talk. so much. God bless you.